suicide, a phenomenon that continues to baffle the world, a brutal end inflicted on, and by oneself as a shortcut to exit a bothersome world. Suicide has been with us for generations and it has disregarded age, social class, gender, religion, country. All is visited by the evil that is suicide. Recently however, suicide cases are on the rise, with children as young as 7 years, deciding to put an end to their own promising and blossoming lives. Elderly people too, they cannot wait for the appointed time. Whenever the spirit of suicide strikes, we all unanimously, rightly so too, express shock and disbelief as victims usually exhibit no apparent signs of contemplating the act. But mostly it is because we don't pay attention, signs are always there, then we bemoan what could have or should have been done to prevent the loss of life. The narrow-minded judgmental people among us, speculate on the causes and the reasons why the victim opted to end his life, especially when victims chose not to leave behind a suicide note. With or without suicide notes, the truth is, no one can fully comprehend the intensity of emotions that lead to someone deciding to end their own lives. Then, there's this tired cliché by self-righteous pontificating lot, of labeling all suicide victims as cowards. Maybe they are really cowards, but dead cowards who live behind a somber cloud of devastation among family and friends. So, if you are one of those throwing the C word around, it's your opinion, but do the world a favor and keep quiet and show some respect to the affected families. And just to educate you, as one who has relished the suicide thoughts many times in my youth, the last thing a suicidal person cares about, is to be a hero or act in a super brave way for your approval. All there is in the mind of a suicidal person is how to end it all. Suicidal people have lost the ability to motivate themselves and do not see any reason to continue living. They have lost all ambitions, life is not worth the trouble. The rest is not their problem. Everyone has an opinion about suicide cases though, especially the so-called experts on the matter aka psychologists. A suicide case presents them with an opportunity to enjoy what I like to call, 15 minutes of fame, or shame sometimes. Fame, to unravel and unpack for us mere mortals, the mysterious ways of suicide. Shame because whatever sophistications they proffer, are of no consequence to the deceased. While some are very close to the point, majority of them exhibit what I call, persona ignoramus syndrome, or peace. It's really painful to watch as they spew what can only be described as intellectual hogwash. Suicide, remains a very personal issue and since we usually talk about the person after they be a victim, we cannot purport to be able to fully psychologize on it. I further fail to reconcile my understanding, with the hypocrisy of always expressing shock and perplexity at suicide cases, knowing very well that we have built an inhumane, capitalistic, cantankerous, non-accommodating, non-forgiving, uncompassionate, intolerant, greedy and stinking society around ourselves. Our ungrateful society, has devised sophisticated ways to normalize a situation where, saints are demonized and demons are canonized. Then we wonder why people, mostly good people, want to end their own lives? I've also heard the version that suicide victims, are either too spoiled or had lived reckless lives so they were, were too scared or embarrassed to live with the consequences of their choices. Correct. Some of them fit the bill, a small portion, we must emphasize. But, even if that were to be the case, would you blame someone from opting out of a situation where they know, they will be vilified and their failures rubbed in their faces, sometimes with huge exaggeration, where their mistakes are blown out of proportion forever? Besides, let he who has no skeletons in the closet cast the first stone. Were the churches and places of worship to live up and heed the call of, come to me all ye who are heavy laden I will give you rest. Were NGOs to live up to the expectations of their visions and mandates, whatever those are, because many look like they came on safari hiatus in Africa, if we are honest. Were governments to focus more efforts and resources in programs, that would lift people from biting poverty and lift the standards of living, were schools and places of training to concentrate on training and inspiring solutions-oriented future leaders, we wouldn't have to drop our jaws at scenes of a loved one, dangling lifeless on a rope or lying with still breath, owing to evil weevil tablets. I can almost hear some of you saying, now what? You aren't offering solutions, this text is depressing. I know. 
If you really want to know the major reason why suicide cases are on the rise, and why many people are tired of living and can't wait to die, here is a thought. Look very closely and carefully and at length in the mirror. If the thing you see can inspire hope, create a chance and give anyone any reason for living, by this time next year, we'll be handling a different topic. To the suicidal fraternity, since you haven't committed suicide yet, and by some coincidence you are listening to this, just humor me for a minute and I promise, what I'm about to tell you, is in no way a persuasion or a deterrent for your decision to kill yourself. I don't know you, I don't know what you are going through, therefore, I cannot pretend to understand or tell you the cliché that everything will be okay. I will just tell you what you and I can agree to be true and factual. 1. Death is painful, but not to the dead. Deceased people usually look very peaceful in their caskets. So in physically speaking, after you die there is no pain. However, we have all lost someone before, and we have all gone through the pain and grief occasioned by that loss. It is very painful, and sometimes life is never the same for the bereaved. Kids are thrown out of school, spouses are thrown out of their matrimonial houses, sometimes crooked government and relatives grab deceased assets, depending on who died life is really changed for the worse. Your death will not be any different. Someone somewhere will mourn you in pain and anguish. Someone's life somewhere will be changed for the worse because you decided to die unexpectedly. I know you may be thinking, yeah, that's the point. I need to make someone suffer by me killing myself. The persons you're trying to hurt or teach a lesson by you killing yourself are the least likely to be pained by your death. The one you're not even thinking of right now, a child, an aunt, a grandma in some village, a school teacher who sees great potential in you, a church member who's blessed by your singing or whatever you do in church, the lady selling tomatoes in the neighborhood. Maybe the person who gets devastated. There's always pain to someone we did not think of. 2. Life goes on. The awful thing about suicide, is that when you're gone, people move on too quickly. Those who hate you and probably are the cause of your suicide, they'll be very happy you are gone. In fact, they will celebrate, quietly, because it'd be awkward if they threw a party. So, they won't miss you and life goes on. Those who love you and wish you were still alive, will mourn you. For a week, a month, or even years. But they will not quit their jobs because you died, they will not stop their careers or businesses because you died. No. Life goes on without you. Eventually everybody accepts that you're gone and moves on. But for you. Your dreams, your goals, your vision, everything is ended. 3. What if suicide is really a sin? What if suicide actually ushers you into more suffering? What you are experiencing now could be really unbearable, but, at least we know that physical suffering can be treated and somehow not. With time, we can even cure it. But would you risk introducing yourself to the suffering of your soul where you can't commit more suicide to escape? Boy. If you are not bothered with this, maybe you are truly brave than people think. 4. Time is a good option. All suicidal people have a common conclusion, which is, I am all out of options right now. Guess what, they are accurate. That statement, is as correct as saying the Pope is Catholic, or, the sun is hot. The very correct portion of that statement is the word, now. Now, can be a very unnerving thing. There too much pressure brought by, now. Because when the landlord comes for rent, he wants it, now. When you make a girl pregnant while in high school, the pressure and the anxiety is, now. When the bank is auctioning your assets due to unpaid loans, they are doing it, now. When you're a public official, entangled in some humiliating scandals, the embarrassment, the shame and the possibility of jail is, now. But if we can allow this, now, to wear itself out, time gives us more options and ideas on how to fight back, or mitigate the fallout of our misfortunes. If you are all out of options, there's always one option left. That option is called time. It heals, it teaches, it stitches the bruises and soothes the wounds. I know this because I took a chance on time and things fell in place. If I killed myself 20 years ago, you'd not be hearing these ideas in 2021. However stupid they may sound. I know you may also have good stupid ideas, and someone somewhere may need to hear them, 20 years from now. So, just consider the time option, let's see how it pans out. 5. So, what is the price of ropes these days? Or how are you planning to do it? You can talk to me. I'd be willing to listen. Reach out on my social media DMs or send an email. Sometimes it helps when you talk to a neutral person who will not judge.